Hello, Physics Nation. This is Millicent Dill, and I'm speaking to you about universal law of gravitation with a side of Kepler's third law. Right here. This happens to be a project for my physics, AP physics class. Sorry, I didn't. I don't know if you can actually see that though. Okay. Anyway, so my problem is, or I'm gonna name all of them. But I'm doing one at a time. First one is find the mass of Jupiter based on data for the orbit of one of its moons and compare your results with its actual mass. I ended up using all of its moons to um, compare. So I'm taking it out of that, but I'll explain that later. Second part is to find the ratio of the mass of Jupiter to that of Earth based on data in the table. I The data is given in like a book we, that we got for AB physics, so that's also in the slide. Third part is astron astronomical, astronomical, I'm dumb, sorry. Observations of our Milky Way galaxy indicate that it has a mass of about 8.0 times 10 to the 11 solar masses. A star opening on the galaxy's periphery is about 6.0 times 10 to the 4 flight years from its center. And the question is, what should the orbital period of that star be? Okay, on to the first part. So, before I did anything, I did a diagram. And, as you can see, what it looks like. Oh, wow, I went wrong way. Hmm. Anyway. So, this is Jupiter. These are all its moons. The dots represent the distance or orbital radius, which is little r, and the equation. And this is the ratio for the second part that I'm doing. Uh, the mass of Jupiter and compared to the mass of Earth. So actually solving it, this is just me going through what I had to do. Part A is finding the mass of Jupiter, comparing it with the real mass of the planet, as I said before. The equation used is Kepler's third law, which is r cubed, which is orbital radius, over t squared, which is um, orbital period, equals universal gravitation constant times mass, which is like the reference mass that I'm using, divided by 4 pi squared. And, and then I rearranged it so it equal, all equals mass instead of separate, because I'm finding the mass. Okay, the structure calculations uh, will be done on every moon of Jupiter, and then I'll take the average, which I end up doing. Um, the units used for the mass are kilograms, which is the metric we have doing mass. Okay, and at the bottom I put the real mass of Jupiter, which is 1.89813 times 10 to the 27th kilograms. Okay, here is the moons Io and Europa. I <laughs> messed up on this. I thought it was an L, but it's actually an I. Io, actually. So let me talk about one of them. I'm going to talk about this one, and then you can just look at that one. Anyway, so Kepler's law problem is the equation that I mentioned before, and then I restated the question. So the moon, Io, and I put the universal gravitation constant, which is 6.673 times 10 to the 11th newtons time meters per second over kilograms squared, I think. I'm not really sure what I put there. Anyway, orbital radius is 4.22 times 10 to the 15th kilograms. Um, kilometers, which I changed into meters, as you can see, by using conversion. So one times that by 1,000 meters, and then you get 4.22 times 10 meters. Anyway, over the period that said on the chart that I had, 0 0.00485 years or 1.77 days, change that into seconds by also using a conversion. So it's 1.52949. 0.6 seconds. So I ended up plug just plugging it in. So orbital radius goes to r cubed. Orbital period goes into t squared, and then you equal it to the you know the way I did it before. And you should get mass of Jupiter equals 1.901 times 10 to uh, the 27th. Same with this one, but you get the, a different mass. Pretty sure it's because I was rounding. Actually, I'm absolutely sure it was because I was rounding. So, that's why I decided to take average. This is Ganymede in Callisto. 
did the same thing, different conversions, of course. Still got different masses, but again, that's why I was decided to take an average of every one of them and then decide there what the mass of Jupiter from my calculations would be compared to you know the original. Okay, this is the discussion of part A. I ended up doing this on a chalkboard too and then rewriting it for some reason. I don't know why I did. Anyway, so as I stated, the real mass of Jupiter is approximately 1.8913 times 10 to 27th, um, 27 kilograms. So, and I said in comparison to the individual calculations, it's pretty close to all of them, but especially Ganymede, which is at like 1.874 times 10 to 27th um, kilograms. In any case, like they're all like really close, generally speaking. And I also did find the average mass of the calculations, which is 1.926 times 10 to 27 um, kilograms. So again, really close, mostly because of rounding. So, on the bar park, all really close, and I like, and they actually don't know, like the real mass of Jupiter. There's like this is a roundabout way. So, this is the second part, which is the ratio. So part B, ratio of Jupiter's mass to the mass of Earth. The equations used is well a ratio. So mass of Jupiter over mass of Earth, or me. So calculations, mass of Jupiter is approximately 1.8913 times 10 to 27th kilograms, as stated quite a few times. Mass of Earth, this little symbol means Earth, by the way, how cool is that, is approximately 5.9736 times 10 to 24th kilograms. Okay, so use the little ratio, plug it in, and then you get 316.61. And I know that's right because I looked it up just in case. Okay, actually solving continued. This is part C, which has to do with the galaxy periphery and, well, the star orbiting it. So I didn't do this part actually, but this one I did. What should the orbital period of the star be? Equations used, use this one. So instead of just using for mass, I did it by period instead. So I saw for T. And did all this, which took quite a bit of maneuvering, actually. So here's this. Here's my little diagram of the galaxy with the little star. Of course, it's not drawn to scale because that'd be a lot. So the distance is 6.0 times 10 to 4 light years. I ended up converting that, as you can see from like over here, which is 5.6764 times 10 to the 20th meters. I'm pretty sure that's what I used. No, I'm definitely sure. I'm hoping. Okay, anyway, the mass of the galaxy is 8.0 times 10 to 11th solar masses, which I also had to change into kilograms, because in order to use this equation, you have to convert everything, or it just won't work. It just, I thought at first that I didn't convert and I was scared because I mean now I would have to do everything again because it wouldn't be right. Anyway, so it's 1.5911 times 10 to the 40 second kilograms. A lot. So anyway, I use this roundabout way of yeah, finding orbital period by solving for it as I said before. So square root of r cubed times 4 pi squared over universal gravitation constant times mass, big M. Anyway, so I got T equals 2.591 times 10 to the 17th seconds. Pretty sure that's a 17. Anyway, here's the real number. I'm not going to say that loud because that's a lot. Anyway, so conclusion of this qu um, question is Jupiter's calculated um, average mass is 1.926 times 10 to 27th kilograms. So, and then I named the difference, which is like 3.47 times 10 to 25th kilograms, which is, may seem kind of, it's weird. Like, it seems big, but it's not actually big. Anyway, 
but like because it's such a big number like that's a small difference at least that's how my teacher explained it so between the real mass of the jupiter and what was calculated using kepler's third law which by the way he is my favorite and his law is the best anyway ratio between the earth, masses of jupiter and earth is six uh three one six point six one which i already went through and the orbital period of the star orbiting the our galaxy periphery it would be about 2.591 times 10 to the 17th so it was right it is 17 clever me anyway that's my problem for physics i hope you enjoyed and if you have any suggestions or if i messed up somewhere please let me know and i know my pronunciation may not be right but i've learned not to judge myself for that anyway Thank you again, and have a nice day, physics world.